How's it going? I'm good. How are you? All right. Let's get to here. We'll start with in person first. Hello, Wes. How you doing? Good. Um, how did uh, Bradley Beal do today? Did he participate fully? Uh, not fully. Uh, we didn't do a whole lot of uh, contact, but he was, uh, for the most part, got through the bulk of practice. Um, he's moving well, looks fine, just uh, out of precaution. Didn't want to do anything that may aggravate, you know, the uh, that same spot. So just stayed away from the contact with him. Is he still tracking to play tomorrow? Yes. And is there anything new on, on Rui? Uh, we know he's kind of been in the building, but we, we haven't seen him yet. No, nothing new as of yet. Um, he's, he's doing his individual stuff. Getting his workouts in, um, and it, you know it'll be, it'll be a steady build. Uh, we still have to kind of evaluate where he is. Uh, we want him to continue to get his conditioning up, and then we'll integrate him as as we see fit. And we saw um, it hit social media that Duke and Bill and Over were here yesterday. Coach K. And rumor has it. Jay Wright. Oh, you weren't you weren't around. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I wasn't around, but uh, I said okay. rumor has it. <laughs> uh, just what can you tell us about that? Did you happen to interact with those guys? Obviously, not at all. No, it's uh, I know uh, a couple of guys on that staff, but. Uh, didn't get a chance to see anybody. Um, this it sounds like such a simple question, but I think it's the question every team has to answer when they go to Brooklyn. Who guards Kevin Durant? For you mm, guys? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, every, everybody has to guard him. I mean, he, <laughs> honestly, he's a uh, g generational talent, and it, it's unfair to say one guy has the responsibility of um, you know making his life tough. And I think that's bottom line: all you can do, um, make him take tough shots, which he can make, but just try to eliminate the uh, the easy looks. His skill set, his, his ability and height, his ability to play off the bounce. I mean, the, the guy can score at will. So it certainly will be a challenge for whomever and ever, and everyone to uh, try to make his life difficult. Is that just kind of the, the mindset that you guys have to get in? We know he's going to make shots over us. We know he's going to get those tough looks. But just how do you kind of drill into those guys? Like, you, you can't give up. You can't, like, sag off or anything. Right. Just, no, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you have to be okay with him making tough shots. And he, he'll, he'll make his share of them. But take away the easy ones. Try to make his lo his life tough. Um, you know we're gonna have to move him around and make him guard a little bit too. So he's just not resting on defense. But uh, he's a unique talent. So it's it's one of those things. It's a mindset that you, we can't get distracted or upset when he makes tough plays. With this kind of stretch that you guys have at the beginning of the season, are you would you rather get the really hard tests out of the way first? So you kind of. I mean, you know, it was a shootout with Indiana. It's going to test your defense against Brooklyn. Like, I know that's probably a lot of preparation for you. But in terms of exposing maybe all the flaws or faults or anything, is that what a kind of gauntlet like this does? Potentially. I mean, those those flaws will surface no matter who we're playing. Um, obviously, certain matchups, certain teams exploit, you know, those weaknesses a little further. But um, we just have to play whomever is on the schedule, um, you know, whether they're healthy or not. I mean, it's easy to kind of get caught into let's let's try and get games early, but we just have to find a way to keep getting better ourselves and worry about the next opponent when that game when that game happens. How is KCP fitting into the starting lineup? Is it kind of going the way you want it to? Is he showing up how you planned? Oh uh, yeah, for the most part, you know, and I've talked to him. It's I, I got to do a better job of getting him more involved in the offense because um, I think that's you know he made shots the other night, made had, you know some timely makes, but um, we've got to integrate him a little bit more so he's just not. Kind of floating around. We do play with a, you know, open spacing, free flowing, and at times guys get got kind of lost. So there's there are some opportunities where we just have to put them in a spot, run some action, and get them a look. When it comes to defending without fouling, um, what needs to be the approach of as you play James Harden and Kevin Durant? Those guys? They're tough, <laughs> and they're, they've done a great job over the years of generating free throws. Um, but it just kind of goes back to that previous point. We can't get discouraged with the tough makes. We can't get overzealous, take ourselves out of position, get our hands over the ball. Just be solid. And if he makes a tough one, he makes one. Just keep doing the right thing, and you know you hope that you know they'll miss their share. But if you're allowing them to get to the free throw line, they see the ball get, go in, now we're playing against a set defense. It just, it just has a snowball effect. Um, I guess it's only still two games, so maybe hard to tell. But seems like you guys are playing uh, at a slower than a league average pace. Is this by design or is this just happen to be a product of game flow so far? Uh, I think a product of game flow. I mean, we still want to play with more pace, more tempo, uh, but what I don't want it to be a track meet uh, where we're just up and down trying to generate as, as many possessions as possible. I don't think that bodes well for our group. Uh, the most important thing for us, I think, is the efficiency. So we can get that pace more in the half court. 
and we've seen it at times where that ball is moving, bodies are moving, that .5 mentality, that's the pace I like. Not necessarily the number of possessions or changing ends quickly, but uh, the ball and body movement in the, in the half court. Sorry, Christos. Hello, Coach. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, coach, great. Uh, coach, what did you see from Denny Abdiga in the first couple of games of the season? You know, Denny's been playing hard. You know, I think at times he, uh, you know, he, he doesn't play with a lot of certainty or, or uh, clarity. But we have to do a better job with him as just designating him either the three or the four. I think at times because we play the way we play, guys can move to different spots. And he's, he's shown glimpses of being able to, to be a playmaker, primary or secondary. But when he's off the ball and he's in another position, sometimes he gets a little lost. So it, it might be something where we have to dial back uh, our offensive package with him and say, you know what, you're just a four here. Um, and defensively, he can move around. He, he's done a great job of, of switching, um, guarding those bigger wing players, um, guarding down and keeping the ball in front. But uh, offensively, just kind of giving him a few less things to con be concerned with and be, uh, be efficient with these, the small package of uh, offensive plays. And don't talk about Corey, Corey Kispert. How different going to be his role through the, game, through the season goes? Uh, you know what, I think it'll fluctuate, honestly. Um, you know, when, when we're healthy, we're at full strength, his minutes may decline. You know, obviously, he's a, a young vet in, in his mentality. Um, he's been around. He understands his role. He understands his uh, his impact on the game. So it's uh, he's a guy you just plug in when you need him. He'll always be ready, and uh, we've seen him respond. So I think it's important for him to just kind of stay with it, make sure he understands what we're doing as we as we grow, but also um, work on his game. So you know, when, when his his minutes are called, he's out there and he can be productive. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's it for today. Uh, the team travels. Um, you know, teams go on runs more often and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, just all around better players, better game. Um, and, you know, I was really happy to be part of it. You uh, sort of went viral with the look you gave Davis for times <laughs> after a shot in overtime. Did you notice that? And uh, just kind of what was your reaction? No, I remember giving him the look and then, um, you know, I was scrolling through Instagram and saw it. Um, yeah, he was, he was a bad man. That was a bad shot. That was a crazy shot. And, um, I had to make sure um, he knew about it. And as a, a shooter and a, a catch and shoot guy, what, what has it been like being around Davis, who's uh, of course one of the best in the league? At? Yeah, I mean, just the, the way he prepares, um, the way he gets himself ready, um, you know, his work ethic day in and day out is really, really something that I've tried to look at and, and model. Um, he does the same thing every day, and um, he's really particular about. Um, how he shoots it and when he shoots it and you know how the, how the ball goes through the rim like super small details he's looking at it through a microscope so um, that's something that you know everybody can learn a little bit from but me especially as a shooter I'm learning from him is is, is really great that way and what are your thoughts as you guys go into uh, obviously a pretty big test for you in, in Brooklyn yeah I know Brooklyn's a great team obviously they have great great players um, and I've had success for a long time um, but you know we're two and oh so um, you know, we have a chip on our shoulder. We're going to head into Brooklyn ready to fight. Aside from your animated facial features, um, what are you learning from sitting on the bench and watching the game? What are you learning? Yeah, just, I mean, we're, I'm constantly talking to the guys next to me about stuff that's going on on the floor, um, making sure that I'm seeing the things that they're seeing, um, asking questions, you know, whether they're dumb or not. Like, I got, I'm going to ask everything. And, um, you know, that way, I, when I do step onto the floor, I'm ready to go right away. I don't skip a beat. So you're going through mental reps, I guess? Totally. Yeah, 100%. And what is it like having Jay, uh, uh, Joel, and uh, Yayi on the team? And now you guys have a Gonzaga trio here. Yeah, you know, me, me and, like, when I say, like, Rui and I are close, like, Joel and I are, like, twice or three times as close. Like, he was my roommate for two years. Um, we lived together, and um, he's probably my best friend that I've made at Gonzaga. So um, to have him in the building here has been, you know, kind of a source of comfort for me, and um, I'm sure he'd say the same thing, too. Yeah, I know. I mean, if yeah, if, if, if Davis just hits a you know go ahead three, I'm not gonna ask a dumb question to Davis in that moment. So, I mean, anybody's fair game, but I gotta pick my moments. That's for sure. We'll go to Zoom. We'll start with Christos. 
Hey, Corey, how are you? Hey, I'm good, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Corey, did you expect in uh, just in your second game to become viral? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was hoping to be viral for something different, you know, something I did on the floor, something I did well, but, um, you know, any pub is good pub, I guess. <laughs> and also about uh, the start of the season, what what did you, uh, what were the takeaways for you about the first couple of games, and what is the ceiling of, that game, of your game and the game of your team? Yeah, well, I mean, our ceiling's super high. You know, we, we grind out wins. Uh, we're doing whatever we can to, you know, find a way to be a, be ahead at the end of the game, and that, that definitely showed in our game against Indy. You know, we weren't perfect for all 48 minutes, and we were stretches. There were stretches that we were, you know, much better and much worse than others, but, um, you know, we're going to continue to get better at putting those good good stretches together. You know, and as far as I go, you know, I'm, I'm only, you know, I'm still learning, I'm still growing, and um, each day I'm going to get better and better, and the game's going to slow down, and, um, you know, I, I believe I have a chance to be really special, absolutely. Thank you very much. That's it, Corey. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Corey. Mm -hmm.